In this video, we're going to code a simple Python class to model an elliptic curve over a finite field of p elements. I'll just mention, first of all, that for a reference for this video, you can search for a PDF uh, by Stein. Just search elliptic curves Stein and you should find it. I'll show the URL right here. All right, to set things off, let's just fix a field K and fix two elements in K. And let's consider the following polynomial relation in two variables, X and Y, given by Y squared equals X cubed plus AX plus B. So basically, it's y squared equals a cubic, where the cubic is missing the x squared term. We're going to require the technical, technical condition that negative 16 times 4a cubed plus 27b squared be not equal to 0. This quantity is called a discriminant, and we require that discriminant to be non-zero, in other words. We're going to define e of k to be the set of all ordered pairs x, y, where x and y are in k which satisfy that polynomial equation. As well, E of k has one additional point, which is a point that we're going to refer to as a point at infinity. Now, our main goal here is to define a binary operation on E of k, and we're going to code that in Python later. And the, the uh, binary operation E of k will in fact give E of k the structure of an abelian group. So it'll be commutative, it'll be associative, it'll have an identity element, and inverses will exist. The reason, in fact, that the discriminant has to be non-zero is for the associativity of the operation to be true. For this video, uh, we're going to restrict our field K to be a finite field with P elements, and moreover, P will be bigger than three. In other words, we're not going to consider the cases where p is 2 or p is 3. Without those cases require a separate treatment. So let's just dive right into the code and let's create a folder to put our code in. We'll create an empty Python file called ellipticcurve.py and let's open in some blind text and write some code. So we'll call the class elliptic curve. We'll define a constructor. The constructor will take in the parameters a, b, and p, which are the defining parameters of the curve. And we'll make a also a field called points, which will be the list of points which lie on that curve. In other words, the infinity point as well as the set of uh, x, y solutions to that particular cubic or y squared equals cubic equation that we talked about before. So for now, we'll just make points be an empty list, but we'll populate it later. Now, we're going to need some helper functions, so let's just write a few of those right now. One is we, we're going to need to be able to reduce an integer mod p. So let's just make a little function to do that so we don't have to write down the code that with the modulus operator every single time. And another helper function will just tell if two integers are equal mod p, which is just another way of saying that their difference is divisible by p. So we'll write those two helper functions. And now let's write a, a simple function to determine the list of all points which lie on a given elliptic curve. Let's define the function define points. And we need an abstract in pointed infinity I don't know if this is the best way to do this, but let's just define a global variable called infinity point and just set it equal to the Python constant none. And that'll act as our infinity point, okay? Uh, it's probably not the best way to do it, but it's good enough for our simple purposes. So in our definition of define points, or our code to write that routine, let's just first add our infinity point to our list because it's, it's one of our points. But the rest of the points after that infinity point are going to be ordered pairs x, y belonging to f, p cross f, p. Uh, and really any element of f, p can be thought of as an integer between 0 and p minus 1. 
So we just have to uh, write some for loops, which uh, test every possible pair, and we just record whichever solution pairs give us solutions to our defining equation, right? And whenever we find a solution, we'll append it to our list. So let's test our code out. Uh, why don't we instantiate a simple elliptic curve here with parameters 2, a is 2, b is 7, and we'll take our prime to be 19. And let's just make a little function to print out the list of points. And uh, then we print them out, and we see that we see the list of points on this particular elliptic curve. We could also write a little function to return the number of points on the curve. It looks like this per this curve has it looks like this curve has 22 points, including the infinite point. And let's take a look at the discriminant. We can write a function to return the discriminant as well. And we see the discriminant of this curve is 18. And that's non-zero, so this is in fact an elliptic curve. All right, to go further, let's add one more helper function, which is finding the multiplicative inverse, mod p, of a non-zero element of fp. Uh, we'll just do a brute force search, running through all possibilities, and if we find it, we'll return it. Otherwise, we'll return none. There's better ways to do this, but there's more efficient ways to do this, but for us, this is good enough. If the inverse does is not found, which is, means x is an integer divisible by p, then we'll just return none. So we're finally ready to define the binary operation that we were talking about before on the set of points of this curve. And here we're going to follow the definition in Stein's notes. It's pretty clearly written out. Now, we should be first asking ourselves, is this binary operation even closed? When I take two points on the curve, x1, y1, and x2, y2, and I follow the prescription that's followed in, these, in this rule here to get a third point, r, how do we even know that point R is, in fact, on the curve? In other words, does it satisfy the, that uh, y squared equals x cubed plus ax plus b relation or not? So it's not totally obvious, but if you look at the proof and the construction, um, you, you can see that, in fact, it does. That's not obvious, but not too hard. But it is important you should be asking yourself this question. You should be saying to yourself, in order for this binary operation even to make sense, the output point, the point R, better be inside E of K. But it is. So if you take that on fact, let's continue. Um, by the definition, you can see clearly that the infinity point ask, acts as the identity element of the operation. That's clear from part one there. And if you look at part two, it's clear that if you're given a point x1, y1, the inverse of that is x1, negative y1. So our binary operation is closed. It has an identity element. It has inverses existing. And although it's not totally obvious, this is also commutative. If you look at the construction of the formulas, you can see that that's true. But what I want to say is the thing that is not obvious is that this operation is associative. And we'll write a little function later in Python to verify that for the curves that we look at. But when it comes to proving, this, proving the, that this binary operation gives E of K the structure of an abelian group, the challenging part is only the associativity of the operation. So... Let's begin writing some code for the binary operation. So let's take in two points, P1 and P2, on our curve. And let's. our goal is to output um, the point R, which is the way he's writing in Stein's notes there. So if let's implement step one. If P1 is the infinite point, then you just return the other element, P2. Similarly, if P2 is the infinite point, you return the other point, P1. This is why I say that it's obvious that the infinite point is the identity element. Now, before we go on, why don't we just define x1, y1, x2, y2 as the x and y coordinates of p1 and p2 for convenience. And let's implement the second step of the notes or the formula, 
which is saying that if x1 is equal to x2 and y1 equals minus y2, then we return the infinite point. And this is why, for this, this is the reason here why I say it's obvious that the inverses exist for this binary operation. Given x1, y1, the inverse is x1 minus y2. So we have a little spelling error where we fix that. Now, the third part of the definition is I'm going to use, instead of lambda, I'm just going to use the letter u for that. Now, you don't, if you look at the geometric construction here of what's going on behind the scenes here mathematically, perhaps we'll talk about that in another video, but for now, I'll just briefly say that this number lambda, or what I call u, is really the slope of the line through P1 and P2, right? If P1, if P1 equals P2, then it's the slope of the tangent line. And you can verify this easily by implicitly differentiating the curve, finding the derivative, and you'll see that the derivative is uh, one of the options there, When is, is the value when P1 equals P2. When P1 is not equal to P2, that's just a basic slope formula, right? Rise over run. But it, this is not too important for this video because we're just focusing on writing some code here. Now, the thing to note here is when we divide by 2y1, or when we divide by x1 minus x2, it's really important to understand that we really mean we're multiplying by their inverses mod p. When you see a division like this, do not think that we're dividing two integers and getting a floating point or a decimal answer. It's not like that at all. We're multiplying these two quantities in the field fp, and when we write 2y1 in the denominator, for example, we really mean multiplying by its inverse mod p. And we can see that how that's implemented in the code there. And whatever we get back from these operations, we want to reduce them mod p just to get them in the range from 0 to p minus 1. And what they call the Greek letter nu, I'll just call v. And v is defined as y1 minus ux1. And then we reduce it mod p as well. And now we're ready to define x3 and y3, which are the output of, of this operation. And we return the point x3, y3 as the result of this binary operation of points p1 and p2. We can test this now by adding, let's say, two random points on the curve we instantiated before and just seeing what we get. So we got some little syntax errors. And then we see the output point is 2 comma 0. And if we look above in the list there, we do see 2 comma 0 is in the list. So that gives some evidence of closure there, that the binary operation produces points that stay within the subset. So let's now write a function to verify the associativity of this binary operation. Basically, we'll just write three for loops nested that run through all possible triples of elements and just test that the order of operation is independent of which ones we do first. Just a basic definition of what associativity is. And when we test it, we see that our binary operation uh, is associative for the elliptic curve we've been working on. This should not be a surprising fact because whenever the discriminant is non-zero, we in fact, the binary operation in fact provides the structure of an abelian group. So in particular, it's associative, right? All right, to finish the video, why don't we just let p equals seven and count how many different elliptic curves there are over the finite field F7. So basically, we just range over every possible choice of A and B. And whenever we find a pair of AB, which has a non-zero discriminant, we get a, an elliptic curve. And we'll have a little counter here that increments by one every time we find a curve. And whenever we find a curve, let's just print out A and B and print out the discriminant and the number of points. And we'll test that the operation is associative. It better return true every time, right? If the discriminant is non-zero, it'll be associative. And we'll print out the point list. And then we'll see how many curves in total we found over the field F7. So when we run this, we see all of our output. Looks like we have 42 different elliptic curves over F7. 
Now, there's probably a lot of isomorphism between these groups and the curves themselves, but we won't get into further with that. So I think that's the end of this video. We just wanted to write a little simple class to generate points on elliptic curves over finite fields.